What's up, Internet Fellowship, especially Kevin O'Neill and Evelyn Bakayan and Monica Flynn. You guys mean a lot to me. You've been commenting a lot on my videos, and I'll tell you, that just keeps me encouraged and fills me right up. Today's video is a blast from the past. It's a younger Tom Griffin, probably two years, I believe. Two years younger, and definitely more immature. But, uh, man, I was going through some past videos that aren't on the channel anymore because I deleted about two or three hundred videos about a year ago or so. And, man, I found this one, and I was really happy to see myself just being a total wingnut, you know? Just goofballing out. And I hope that you enjoy this, too. I'm going to preface it by saying that the Lord wants all of us. So if you really are going to give the Lord all of you, be prepared to talk about very serious things and sometimes to be a little bit goofy and to be lighthearted about it. So I hope you enjoy this as much as I enjoyed watching it last night. Hey, what's up you guys? Tom Griffin here with Gleaning the Scriptures. Today we're going to go over something called Russian Multiplication. Or maybe it's Russian Edition. No, nope, it's definitely Russian Multiplication. And uh, at first it's where we're going to have a bunch of math stuff, but don't worry. We're going to get into the scripture right after that. Let's get started. Isn't it cool, man? How everything's all connected, bro? It's all connected, brother. Everything is all connected, though. So let's check this out. We're looking at how the uh, world of mathematics, as deep as you can get into it, you find that it really is all connected. But does the Bible say anything about that? No, it doesn't. What the Bible does say, though, is that it's our words that set on fire the course of nature. How can we connect these two things? Well, I'm going to show you one simple concept that really, really illustrates how much everything is connected using mathematics. Can you guys see me all right? I don't know if you guys can see me with this camouflage hat on. Pick two numbers, any two numbers. I hope you picked... 33 and 7, because those are the numbers that we're using today. So we're writing that down, 33 times 7. We're going to be halvesing and doublesing. If you half 33, you get 16 and a half. You can take out the fraction, so we just got 16. Half of 16 is 8, half of 8 is 4, 2, 1. There's our left column, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. We're multiplying this by 7. 7 is going to be in the right-hand column. So here we've got doubles in. We're going to double 7 and get 14, double 14 and get 28. Then we've doubling 28 and we got 56, double 56 we got 112, you double, double 112 and you got 224. There that's plenty because we've already gotten down to the same row in our uh, halves in column. And what's next? Obviously, 7 plus 14 plus 28 plus 56 plus 112 plus 224 does not equal 33 times 7. But if you take out all the even numbers, it does. Let's cross out the whole row. 16 and 14, gone. 8, the, uh, the row for 8, gone. The row represented by 4, gone. The row represented by 2, out of there. And we're left with 7 plus 224. We all know what 7 plus 224 is. It's 231. And wouldn't you know, 33 times 7, it equals 231. You can do this with any number. doesn't matter what number it is, what numbers they are, as long as it's two numbers, you can multiply them together in this way. How cool is that? And there's another way to do this. It's more or less the same thing, just slightly different. Now back before we had calculators and all these computery stuff, people still had multiplied big numbers together every once in a while. So how the heck would they do it? Well, that method right there, apparently, is what they call the Elizabethan method. But it turns out that even the Egyptians used this sort of method, but they did it in a slightly different way. The way they do it is they write down their 33 times 7, just like anyone else, and then they put their 7 down, and then their 1. And then they'd start doubling that left-hand column. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. 
We stop at 32 because we're only multiplying by 33. When we go over to the other side, we've got our 7, we double that, 14, 28, 56, 112. Now how do we figure this? Well, th how do we get 33 from the numbers on the left-hand column? 32 plus 1 is 33. You don't need any of the other numbers. You cross all those numbers out. And what you're left with is your 7 and your 224, which equals 231. Okay, just in case you can't see me, I'll turn my hat around. Oh, shoot. I'm still, still hidden. Anyway, at least you can hear me, right? So what we've got here is this method of showing how numbers are intimately connected with one another. Why is that cool? Well, because numbers are a theoretical thing that describe the reality that we live in. Everything's all connected, just like our loopy friend says, right? So, um... How can we add up words? You say, Tom, that doesn't, uh, that doesn't make any sense. You can't, you can't add up words. Well, it turns out you actually can. Not if you're speaking English, but if you're spe speaking Hebrew, you can. Because every one of those letters has their own meaning. Here's an example. Let's start with the word Bereshit, shall we? The word Bereshit is the very first word in the Bible. It means in the beginning. And the Father has taken that word and separated it and made it kind of special. In that, in this way, it does not act like any of the other words. It behaves all on its own. Bereshit is spelled with a bayit, and a bayit is representative of a house or a dwelling. Next, we have a resh, which represents a divine force or awareness. Then we've got an aleph. The aleph is an ox and represents great strength. It's also the very first letter in the aleph bet, and with it being the very first letter in the aleph bet and it representing strength, great strength, it is a letter that represents the father. Bayat is the second letter, and it is the representative of the sun, where we are to dwell within the sun. Next we have the sheen, Bayat Resh Aleph Sheen. The sheen is represented of, uh, by a tooth or teeth, and it is to destroy or to break apart. Yod is a hand and represents creativity. And then last in Bereshit we have the Tav, which is represented by a cross in its original marking, and it is the summation of this life. Now, in this particular instance, beginning does not mean this, but because in the beginning God created, this points to the meaning of this life, the meaning of life, our existence, why we're here, what the point of it all is. So if you take Bayat and Resh and combine them, you get Bar. Bar means sun. Aleph means strength, or it represents God. So now let's take this and spell out what this means. The Son of God destroyed himself by his own hand on the cross. There you have the entire gospel message in the very first word of the scriptures. And every word in Scripture does this. If you go through the Scriptures, everything, it is all intimately and deeply connected. And it all points to the Savior. It truly is the point of all of this, is to give Him worship and glory and praise. Because God is everything, He is in everything, and by Him, all things are held together. If you're angry with him or with anything, if you have problems in your life, turn to him. Humble yourself. Let go of that tension and allow yourself to be loved by God. He will turn you into a precious gem. Now, if that one doesn't uh, suit your fancy, let's see another word that shows us that everything is all connected in our words and that our words really do set on fire 
the course of nature. In the very first name ever given to a man, we have a pretty good example, again, of how all these different letters all add up to mean a certain thing. As you can see, each of these letters has their categorical meaning. They're not exact. The meanings can be and are encouraged to be stretched in order to suit the, well, the all of existence. Here we've got Adam, which is spelled Aleph, Dalit, Mem. Now Aleph is the ox or the strong leader. A Dalit is a doorway or a pathway. And then Mem, again, we have waters in this instance. Waters that can be destruction and the world. Or they can be the waters of life. We add all of this up and we have the strong leader that opened the doorway that leads to life or death. Isn't that exactly what Adam was? He was the first man. He first opened that doorway of life. And that, li that doorway of life leads to life or destruction. And Adam chose destruction. So as you can see, everything really is all connected, whether it's numbers or language. And believe it or not, you can do this too. You can multiply 345 by 1062. Put those things in those columns and half sums and double sums and add some ups, and you've got that answer before any of your friends if there's no calculator around. But we are in the year 2020, so you might want to have your calculator in your pocket if you're going to a maths competition. And if you're going to a scripture competition, you might want to know your Hebrew. And believe it or not, you have the power inside of you to learn your Hebrew. Thanks for looking at this video. Thanks for being here with us and enjoying some, uh, I don't know, matrix of existence. I don't know if that's what you want to call it or not. But hit the like button. Subscribe to this video if you aren't already subscribed. And do what you can to share this with your friends. All of those things are extraordinarily helpful to ensure that this message gets out to people so that you aren't all on your lonesome, knowing these things all by yourself. And if you ever feel like that, just remember, you are not alone. Yeshua is here with you. In fact, it's Him that's teaching you these things. And His knowledge is vast. Hallelujah. You guys have a good day. You guys have a good week. We'll see you again sometime soon. Bye. This Russian multiplication thing, I got this idea from a guy named Brady. He's got a channel called Number File. He's also got a channel called Number File, too. You should check them out. That video should be right there. When this guy explains Russian multiplication, he does it in a way that is really interesting. He tells a story, and it's captivating and interesting, and uh, he does an excellent job. Check that video out. It's, it's worth watching. And hey, if you're just into learning things in general, I can suggest Steve Mold's channel. It's going to be in a link in the description in the comments of this video or in the description of this video. Steve Mold's videos are really tidbitty. They're usually five to ten minutes long and they're just little tidbits of information. Random facts but very interesting. For example, one of those facts is about uh, records and the way that they're made. And uh, you know that the needle follows the groove? Well, some records, there's multiple grooves in there. Sometimes there's a hidden song. And in one particular record, there are six or eight or, or twelve, a large number of all different grooves that all intertwine and wind right into the center. And when you take this record and put it on the record player and pull the needle over, it's complete and total happen chance as to where that needle will fall. It's kind of a fun game to play with, uh, with your friends. I'll see if I can't find that video and link it here up above. But if you're into learning all kinds of things, check out Steve Mold's channel. We'll see you on the next video. Adios. Shalom.